Well, hello, sinners. How are you? It's September, which means it's back to school season for some of you. And that also means it's back to making fun of straight people on Reddit season. Just kidding, that's every season. <clears throat> Do those two things have any correlation? Absolutely not. But I introduce these Reddit videos in the same fashion every single time, so I thought I'd spice it up today. But I was scrolling through my channel the other day, and I realized that it's been nine months since I've gone through the subreddit r slash are the straights okay. I could have had a baby in that time. And before anyone speculates, no, I am not pregnant because... You know, the closest I'll get to motherhood right now is by taking care of my pet fish and multiple squishmallows. However, instead of bringing a little human into the world, today I will be giving birth to the long-awaited threequel of R Straight People OK. If you're new here, R slash R The Straights OK is a subreddit that points out the oddities of straight culture found in various parts of the internet. I always go into these videos thinking that straight people can't get any worse, yet my expectations are blown out of the water every single time. But before we jump into this week's episode of Heterophobia, I have a word from today's sponsor. So I'll be back in just a minute or two, so you better behave yourselves in the meantime. And I'm not kidding. Hi, I'm in a different shirt. You know the drill. I'm happy to announce that the sponsor of today's video is native. I don't know about you, but I've seen so many people on social media rave about native deodorants. Now that I got my hands on a few of them, I completely understand the hype. I got Midnight Jasmine and Sage in their regular packaging, but I also picked up three of their plastic-free deodorants. Let me show you what I got. I received Cucumber and Mint, Cotton and Lily, and finally Aloe and Green Tea, which happens to be my favorite out of the bunch. It smells really good and it's great for sensitive skin which I have plenty of. Native's plastic-free deodorant uses the same formula as their regular deodorant. The only difference is that it comes in more sustainable packaging. Native is a proud partner of 1% for the planet, and they commit 1% of their plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. But you're not restricted to the four cents I just mentioned. Native has a wide selection of choices on their website. They're always coming out with limited edition and sensitive fragrances, so you'll have no problem finding a deodorant that works for you. Not only do native deodorants smell good, but they also feel good on your skin. They don't have a sticky texture like other deodorants I've tried, and they also dry super quickly. Native is vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, and aluminum-free, and their deodorants are made with familiar and simple ingredients such as coconut oil and shea butter. And since fall is coming up, make sure you check out their limited edition coffee house collection. Three plastic-free deodorants typically cost $39, but it's if you use the link down below and code Anna Marie at checkout, you can get three plastic free deodorants for only $29. So make sure to use my code Anna Marie at checkout to receive three plastic free deodorants for 25% off. Thank you so much to Native for supporting my channel. Now let's get back to your scheduled programming. Now it's time to ask ourselves the age old question Are straight people okay? No, you silly goose. Anyway, the first post we'll be looking at is an Amazon listing of sexualized children's clothing. Unfortunately, this kind of clothing has been a staple in every episode of Our Straight People, okay? But let's take a look at this horrible outfit. Allegedly, this ensemble is for a newborn baby girl, and the shirt says... Sorry boys, daddy says no dating. Your daughter's still in diapers, yet you're thinking about who she may or may not date in 20 years from now. Okay, think about it for a second, let it marinate, and consider how f weird that is. All I know is that a gay couple would never get away with a shirt like this. The couples who put their kids in this kind of stuff are the same people to say, let kids be kids, why do we have to confuse them? When there's a sliver of queer representation in a children's show. But like, this is okay? You're fine with making fairy tales about your newborn's non-existent dating life? That's fine? You can't say that the queer community is sexualizing children when you're putting out like this. I'm just saying. The next one is a meme from some subreddit, and the caption is, girls will never know what's wrong with this photo. I love how this person forgets that there are female electricians and female engineers who would know what the problem is. And I'm sure there are also plenty of men who don't know what's going on in this photo. But like, it's bold of you to assume that since I'm a girl, I don't know what's going on. That's... 
sexism. But I know exactly what's going on in this photo, okay? You see, like, the wire is, like, looped under the other one, and then, like, you tie them around and then carry the one, and then you bring the electron over to the other side, and... Okay, did you get all that? Feel free to rewind, because I'm not explaining myself again. For our third post, we have another meme. This time, it's from Twitter. How dudes that drink cider like to be kissed, and... Good for them. Hey fellas, is it gay to drink juice? I mean, you do need something to wash your appetizers and desserts down. I don't understand why some men have such a gripe with sweet drinks. What, only real men can down a bottle of whiskey or butt chug 87 beers at a time? As a society, we need to stop pretending that beer and whiskey are good. I'm convinced the only reason why people drink beer and whiskey is to look cool, not because they actually taste good. But back to the photo, if a guy wants to be kissed in this manner, then more power to him. If a guy wants to drink his cider and then be carried bridal style by his girlfriend, then we should let him. It's 2021, baby, stop gatekeeping cider. Next, we have a status from our favorite website. Facebook, aka the Florida of social media, aka the Wild West of social media. There are no rules on Facebook, only vibes. Bad vibes, that is. But this is a college page where students can submit anonymous love letters, and the one we're about to read was a rejected love letter. I'm gonna admit that I read through this love letter a couple times before I started filming, and I don't really understand why this person got turned down. So I want you, my audience, to study this letter, really read like among the context clues and through the symbolism, and let this person know where they went wrong. Here's what the rejected love letter says. Day number 465 without sex. Getting turned on by marsupial penises in your reproductive physiology class. Okay, we have red flag number one. But seriously though, what's a girl gotta do to get some good d around here? Don't you dare say, just go up and ask them. There's literally only two cute boys in the whole class and both are always surrounded by a sea of friends. Like their effing entourages are so big that you can't even physically get close enough to say hello. I guess I'll just go die alone and insatiable wretch. This was posted in 2019, the 21st century. A time where online dating is as prevalent and accessible as ever. You could have made a whole Tinder profile in the time that you took to thirst over marsupial. And in case if you didn't know, this is what a marsupial is. Also, do you just go up to random people and say, Hello and salutation, good sir. May I have some spare please? You can just approach the cute guys in your class, introduce yourself, and see where it goes from there. I don't know, I just think there are plenty of solutions other than being attracted to marsupial. <coughs> the next post we have is also from Facebook, but instead of reading it like I normally would, I'm gonna act it out like I'm two teenagers in a high school drama class who only know how to overact. Without any further ado, I present to you the essence of feminism. Look at me, I'm a fat. This happens. This is completely normal. Maybe. <laughs> I don't hesitate that I am fat, okay? And also, I don't shave my armpits and not wash ass. I do not interesting in this. I like myself for who I am. I do not care. And you must like me too, LOL. No. Ugh, why do you prejudice me, you f sexist. I don't know if I should be offended or not because I have no idea what this guy is saying. But you know, I'm not interesting in this anymore, so I'm gonna move on because I have a warning for all of you. Warning! Wearing yoga pants may lead to lesbianism! I'm gonna strongly disagree with her on this one because you know what pants actually lead to lesbianism? It's these ones. I think every lesbian has owned a pair of these shorts at one point in their life. It was like a staple of closeted lesbian fashion in the early 2000s. And I owned quite a few pairs of these shorts growing up, which explains a lot. <laughs> All I'm saying is that my plaid Bermuda shorts walked so my Doc Martens could run. Before we continue, I have to warn you that the story I'm about to read 
might single-handedly be the funniest story I've ever read on my channel. Unfortunately, I don't know who the author is, so I can't give them credit, but you know, feel free to laugh, feel free to giggle a little bit, but please hold all of it to the end because you don't wanna miss a single second of this story. Funny story. A man walks into a bar and very sadly orders a beer. Why are you sad, the bartender asks. The man replies, my wife and I fought and she said she wouldn't talk to me for a month. So, why are you sad? The bartender acts, confused. The man answers, because the month ends today. Ah ha ha ha, get it? It's because he hates his wife. I've never understood the wife bad genre of humor. If being married makes you that annoyed and that miserable, then stay single. However, we can only hate our spouses for so long before we ask ourselves, can you girl cook? If she can cook and you cheat on her with someone who can cook, then it's not cheating. It's called surviving. Letting the whole world know that you can't fend for yourself is not the flex you think it is. Cheating is already bad, but saying that it would be for your survival is number one wrong and number two, proves that you're a giant man baby. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Cooking and cleaning aren't chores meant for one gender. They're essential life skills that any adult should possess, especially if you live on your own. Moving on from useless men, this tweet says, Hello, yes, sometimes women can be naturally muscular too. I've never been to the gym or had a regular workout routine in my life. If you play the game, I think you'll find all your questions about Abby get answered, including why she's ripped AF. And then attached to the tweet is two pictures of this woman showing off her muscles. But of course, if there's women on Twitter, that means there are men in the replies giving their unsolicited opinion. I hate to be that guy, but if she swallows or takes nut up the rear, it contains testosterone. And especially when put up the rear, where things go through your entire bloodstream and entire cycle before it gets to your liver slash kidneys it's just like taking steroids you really logged onto twitter and said that with your whole chest i can't even fathom how stupid this person is like that's not how any of this works well if you're a gym bro and you're watching this you can throw out your protein powder and start drinking your own cum wanna be strong sip on your schlong. I do greatly apologize, but I am gonna have to go back to Facebook. However, I'm sure you'll be relieved to know that the post we have coming up is a whole lot worse than the two we read before. Let's begin. The American female is a dying breed. Women who have vaginas are subordinate to their husbands. Put out during sex even when they are tired, on their period, are sick or drunk. Support their husbands by cooking, cleaning, child rearing, and having sex that put God, America, and their kids before gays, communists, and the government. They are told that having kids is wrong and that dating outside your race is normal. Mm. How can you be a good wife if your whole is destroyed, you support Marxism, you don't put out, you can't or won't have kids, you reject God, you are gay pretending to be a woman, Ah yes, the two genders, gay and woman. You support equal rights, but not equal fights. Can I get an amen? You're toxic, controlling, racist, predatory, misogynistic, and homophobic, and you wonder why a woman won't submit to you? Beats me. Also, what's with the quotes around tired and sick and drunk? If someone says no, then the answer is no. It doesn't matter what the reason is. Even if you coerce them when they're tired or on their period, that is not equal to them consenting. Whoever subscribes to this mentality is beyond creepy and you deserve to get ejected to a remote island away from the rest of civilization. Anyway, don't be a boring boyfriend. Text her, we need to talk, while she out enjoying her night with her girls, and then ghost her by going back to sleep when she replies. Keep the relationship interesting. Laws of Toxicity 6967. That's the biggest concern here. You don't want to be a boring boyfriend. Only the most boring boyfriends let their partners have a fun night out with friends, okay? Nothing screams mediocrity like giving your partner space. Instead, 
Be an insecure and controlling boyfriend. Your partner goes out without you? Make sure you give her unnecessary anxiety. Now just wait for it. So she'll be eaten alive with guilt and never go anywhere without you again. This guy should really think about the toxicity of his advice. What if I told you that your genitalia is not really yours? I know that might be hard to believe, but hear me out for a second. Ultimately, God created you, and it is his p <coughs> You are simply borrowing it for a while, knowing that his p <coughs> would need a home. God created a woman to be your wife, and when you marry her and look down, you will notice that your wife is shaped differently than you and makes a very nice home. In case you didn't know, Pastor Mark Driscoll is the mastermind behind this quote, and pictured with him is his lovely wife, Grace, AKA his penis home. I would just like to know what part of the Bible mentions God's Like, was it Exodus, Corinthians, Revelation, maybe? Like, I don't know. I went to Catholic school for eight years and I, I think I skipped this part of the Bible, honestly. And how does this rental system work? Is your soul put on a waiting list? Do you need a library card to check out God's for 70 to 80 years? And also, like, where did God get all these This dude must think really highly of his if he believes that it was handcrafted by a deity just for him to use. What's even creepier is that based on this quote, he just looks at his wife like she's a vessel for his pleasure, not like her own person, not like she's an equal partner to him. He really said, my wife is a whole for my godly wiener. And his congregation's like, yeah, so true, bestie. And last but certainly least, we will be looking at another disturbing piece of children's clothing. We started the video off with one, so it's only fair to end the video with one as well. So we have a shirt and tutu set from Etsy, and the shirt says, all daddy wanted was a blowjob. Honestly, if you dress your child in something like this, then you should be on the sex offender registry. So are straight people okay? Uh, you know, after hearing a man talk about his godly <laughs> I'm gonna say no. If you would like to suffer through part four with me, let me know in the comments and make sure to follow me on all my social media, which will be linked down in the description. And also, if you have any video suggestions for me, I have a Google form where you could submit all of your ideas and that will be linked in the description as well. If you liked today's video, make sure to give me a very tiny thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thank you so much to Native for sponsoring today's video. I love you guys and I'll see you next time with the brand new video. Bye!